took a car service because uh, we were able to schedule it ahead of time and we called them and asked if we could take dogs. And they said yes. So we're here about four hours early, but there's a lot of stuff that we got to take care of before we uh, fly out. First thing we have to do is get all the paperwork done. There's a animal and plant quarantine office here at the airport. So we have to make sure that uh, we get everything done so that Nala is good to fly and good to be uh, exported into a different country. All done at the animal and plant quarantine office. That was easy peasy. It took about 15 minutes and it cost $7 which is awesome because we did this in the US and it cost us like 150 bucks. Next up, we need to weigh our luggage and see how much we're over because I'm pretty sure that like three or four of our suitcases out of eight are over the weight limit. So we might have to do some repackaging. Worst case, worst case scenario, we have to get a box and put the over stuff onto a empty box. We'll figure it out. It's 22. 23 each. 23 each? Yeah. 23.9. Okay. 28.5. Yeah. Okay, so we're six pounds over. We're six kilos over, 12 pounds over. Yeah. Okay. This one's... Wait, 22? 23. So this is even heavier. Yeah. So we're over on every single box. Yeah. Okay, bad news. We are over on every single bag. So on the four check bags, we're over on every single one of them and the heaviest two were over by like 15 pounds each. So not even close. We thought maybe we could rearrange the bags so we could put some of the heavier stuff into the other bags and even things out, but nope. So we have no option. We're gonna go to the uh, rebagging zone or it's not a rebagging zone. It's like a packaging service area. And I think we can pay and buy a box and, and stuff. I think it's gonna be expensive, but we don't really have a choice. So it is what it is, poor planning by us. We're at this packaging area. This is a lot cheaper than I thought. We got the biggest box possible and it's $9. So it's $9 for this box, which is expensive for a box, but for a packaging service at an airport. And then we're gonna fill this up to as high as we can, as heavy as we can, and they're gonna wrap it all up. They're gonna shrink wrap it so that it's nice and safe. I think that we get an extra free bag because Kim's like gold status or something at this airline. So we might not have to pay for it at all to get it checked, but I thought this was gonna be like a hundred bucks. This is awesome. That looks so dangerous. That looks ridiculously dangerous, but that's not gonna bust open. That's very solid. Oh, so yeah, yeah. Wow, that was great. That's the biggest box for nine dollars and then the smallest box goes from two dollars and the biggest box goes all the way to nine dollars so thank you korea for not price gouging people at airports that is a american and everywhere else thing not a korean thing okay that was a great experience worst case scenario now we have to pay a little bit extra maybe like 150 200 bucks for an extra checked luggage but i'm hoping that kim's gold status comes through and then we get to check it for free in which case this entire thing only costs us nine dollars we made it to the uh, check-in counter all the hardest stuff is over so we got the extra stuff packed we got nala's quarantine certificates and everything set this is the easy part this is the part that we're used to we just check in our bags go inside is there a lounge here yeah right we'll see we'll see if we can get into the lounge and then we can relax I'm not generally a very sweaty person. I am drenched again and head to toe. I'm on a, I'm on a bag picking up and putting down and repacking duty. It's my duty. It's Kim's duty to be pretty and take care of Nala. Okay, so we hit some hiccups along the way there, but we're all set. The uh, quarantine document only had one of our flights on and not the uh, second one because we're transferring in Taipei and I had to book it because they were almost closed. And if I missed it, we would not be able to fly out today. So I had to run across the airport. And that's why I'm sweating again, even though I cooled down. So I had to run across the airport, get to the office, tell them, look, you only put one of the flight numbers down. They got to fix it up for us. And then I ran back across. We're all set. And then we got called into security. And we were like, what's going on? And it turned out we had one of those uh, 
uh, battery packs and you're all to check in a battery pack. So crisis over there. We're all set. We got our boarding passes. Kim took Nala outside to pee outside one last time. And then we're gonna go into the Asiana lounge because apparently Eva Air is part of Asiana and we can chill. Our flight is a little delayed, which is fine because we have a 12 hour layover in Taiwan. But we have two hours, a little over two hours before boarding start, boarding time starts. So we're gonna go to Asiana lounge, get some food, get some drinks, get some rest. Next time I see you, uh, we'll be on the plane. One side quest, I have to get our tax refund. It wasn't that much, but it was a lot more than I thought. It was 19 bucks. That's pretty good. We've been getting a lot of instant tax, re tax refund for the things that we've been buying, so we didn't have a lot of tax refund receipts. By the way, how ridiculously obnoxiously cool is this Louis Vuitton store? Yeah, but $19 is $19. That's like... <laughs> how much is that? In dong? 500,000 dong? Yeah, 500,000 dong. That's, hey, that's not bad. But you can't get it in dong, so we got it in dollars. Now we can go to the lounge. How are you feeling, Kim? I'm starving. You're starving? We made it. Mm -hmm. This is the hardest part is over. Almost. We're at the uh, Asiana Lounge now. We have an hour and a half before boarding starts. I don't think I have enough time to shower. So maybe there's a lounge in Taipei where I can shower. Because I am stinky. I'm not stinky. I showered this morning, but I'm just a little sweaty. Hang in there, Kim. We haven't even started. Itinerary. Two and a half hour flight to Taipei. 12 hour layover. 11. 11 hour layover, because we're delayed by one hour. And then two and a half hour flight to Da Da Vietnam. Hey. It is 10.46 right now and they told us the lounge closes at 11.30. So the lounge closes at 11.30, which kind of sucks. We have to be kicked out onto the street, figure out what to do, and the lounge reopens at 4.30 a.m. so we can come back. This is one of the nicest lounges I've ever seen at an airport. Uh, I didn't want to film because there's a lot of people. Quick update. This is a very cool airport. We got kicked out of the lounge because they close at 10.30. It's 11.30 now. I took a quick shower. There are public showers for people that are transferring and this place is like completely empty right now. So I got to take a really long, nice shower. The only downside was there's no, there were no towels. So I had to use like a one clean shirt to dry myself off. And then I didn't have any pants, clean pants, except for new ones that I just bought. So I'm wearing these shorts right now, but all the tags are still on them and I don't have any scissors, so I can't take them off. They look weird. I'm walking around this area right now looking for a place for Kim to sleep because the lounge isn't open for another five hours. So I'm looking for like a nook or a bench or something where she can sleep comfortably. First time in Taipei. They didn't expect it to be like this. This airport is super pretty, but everything's closed. I saw some benches here but they're kind of small. I don't know if you can sleep on these. Are they all the same size? This one's a little bigger. Like, I think Kim can sleep on this one. All right, that's one choice. Good, not great. Oh, here? I don't know what time the restaurant opens though. I don't want to like intrude. I doubt they open at 4.30 a.m. So maybe this is a good choice. Let's see if she likes those. Kim's still good? I found this little nest. Little nesting area right here at this restaurant. See you on the next flight. That was a rough night. Rough night. I think I got maybe 20 to 30 minutes of sleep in like five to 10 minute increments. Kim slept like a baby. Kind of. About a few hours, right? 
two hours, Kim slept two hours. <laughs> My brain is in low power mode. Two and a half hour flight, two to nine. safely to Danang. Just getting our luggage now. We made it successfully through customs and animal quarantine, which in Danang kind of doesn't even exist. They were just like, uh, do you have a paper? They don't have like a quarantine office or anything. We just went through security. They're like, uh, can I just look at your paper? He didn't even read it. And he was like, okay, normally you're supposed to keep one, but it's okay. You can just go through. And that was that. It's actually a beautiful day in Danang as well. It's not too hot. It's not raining. We were supposed to have a really humid thunderstorm, but this is just like perfect weather. The sky is beautiful. Like, can you see the giant smile on my face? Like, look at the sky. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but perfect weather. Look at the clouds. I know. This is awesome. You feeling good? We're all set. We're all done. Now that we did it. All right. We're gonna see you guys at the uh, apartment. It's only about like a 10 minute drive. We got some cousins picking us up. Uh, we'll see you there. I take it back. It's hot. It's hot. It's 90 degrees, 92 degrees. It's so hot, I'm already slurring my words. It's probably hotter with the uh, humidity. I think it's like 72% humidity, but it's still nice. Look how nice this weather is. No, it's like dying. perfect weather. It's like perfect tropical weather. No one likes AC. All right, this is a new home. Really quick glance around. We got all the cousins here. We got all the, uh, the real estate agents here helping us out. We'll get a proper view of it later, but this is the main reason that we picked this place. Oh, it's bigger than I thought, this patio, but look at that view. We got the river view. We got the dragon bridge that spits fire. We got fireworks. We're on the Soncha side, but you see Hai Chao right across the river here. Oh, this is bigger than I thought up here. Got four AC units blasting. Oh my gosh, the washer's out here. Oh no, is that the drying rack? Oh, we're gonna have to figure out something for that. But pretty happy with the place so far. I can't beat the view. All right, we'll give you guys a proper, a proper tour going forward. But they took the bed out of this one. Oh, this is a tiny room. Good thing they took the bed out of here. This one's gonna be the uh, office. Oh, it's a closet. Wow, views from every room. So we're a corner unit here, so we got views from every room. All right. I filmed this whole vlog on my phone, by the way, because my hands are always full with bags. I couldn't pull out my camera. Um, we're gonna settle in, get Nala fed, maybe shower real quick, and then we're gonna go walk around. I think Kim's family wants to throw a little mini lunch party thing for us. Uh, but thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging with us. This was a 22 hour long trip. Nala's uh, finding a place for herself. She's exhausted. I'm exhausted. Thanks for sticking with us. Make sure to like and subscribe. See you guys on the house tour for the next video and for Vietnam vlogs going forward. Peace out.